Hey everyone, thanks for showing up to the booth, I guess, or joining us on our live stream. <clears throat> My name is Alex Sachs. I'm a pro market specialist for Canon based out of Hollywood, California. And I work primarily with our cinema products, but have some crossover in our DSLRs as well. Um, today I want to talk about some two new products actually that we announced uh, about a week ago for the show. Uh, but we actually have one of them here and uh, two of them over at our booth. Um, the two products are a multi-purpose cinema camera and a compact servo cinema, lenses, uh, cinema lens. Both, I think, are uh, really valuable for certain types of production, especially the lens. Um, but the first one I want to talk about is this new multi-purpose camera. Uh, you may have seen this product a while ago looking very similar to this. It's uh, the kind of little brother to our ME20, which is our low-light camera. Everyone kind of knows that as our 4 million ISO camera, the one that shoots in the dark. But essentially, it's a full-frame cinema camera and what we've done is we've done a, a second in the multi-purpose uh, category is our new ME200S-SH. And that's a, basically the exact same body, but with our C100 Mark II sensor inside of it. So the ME20, which is the big brother, has a full frame cinema sensor in it. And the new camera has a Super 35 size sensor in it. So just some basic kind of uh, specs on the camera. As I said, it's a Super 35 CMOS sensor. Uh, 8.29 megapixels. Uh, it's got our dual pixel CMOS AF, which is perfect for gimbals, uh, any kind of uh, rigging, drones, things like that. Um, the ISO is going to go up to 204,000, which is literally just one more step past the C100 Mark II. Uh, so again, it's very, very similar to our C100 Mark II sensor stuck in this multi-purpose body. And it has some really interesting advantages that maybe the C100 Mark II doesn't have. One of them being it has two SDI outputs on it. It's got a pigtail power for um, lenses and things like that. So it's, it's a very similar camera to the C100, but it has a little bit of a different form factor. So just kind of take a looking at the back of the camera. If you see here, it's got two SDI ports, 3G SDIs. Uh, the top one's actually a monitor, and the bottom one is a record out. So the top one's going to have all your info. It's going to be how you control the camera. Um, if you record out of the top monitor, you're going to want to turn off the info once you start recording, because it will actually burn in the info um, as you're shooting. But the second port, as you can see, on the uh, image right here, the bottom one is clean. So that's what we call our rec out. And that's what you're going to put to an Odyssey 7Q, an, Ad uh, an Atomos Shogun. Um, again, this camera is actually going to require a external recorder and external power. It's a very, very simple uh, box size camera. So it has uh, industry standard four pin XLR power. It's got HDMI, three assignable buttons, which can actually turn on your infrared color shooting. Um, Genlock, so if you're going to be using multiple versions of these cameras, we're thinking more virtual reality applications and gimbals and multi-camera, uh, maybe ENG style shoots. Um, and we have the uh, RS-422 remote terminal, which works really well with our RCV100, which is our remote. So this is the front of the camera. And uh, again, it looks identical to our ME20, but the front has uh, our EF cinema lock which is our Canon's proprietary EF mount, but with a actual mount that spins similar to a PL mount uh, lens. And then we also have the 12 pin pigtail on the front. And what that's really good for is providing power to cinema servo lenses. So our 17 to 120, our 50 to 1000, the ones that will cover Super 35, now you actually have a way to route the power directly to them. So it's all coming off of one battery. It's nice and clean, very efficient on sets. So the camera's really small. You know, it's, it, we call it, it's, it has an M in the front of it, which stands for multi-purpose. You have to remember that this camera is meant to be used on a bunch of different types of environments, fixed camera lenses, on drones, reality um, style shoots. Uh, it can really work for everything. So it may not have some of the things that a full cinema camera has, but it certainly can be used as a real cinema product. Um, we're really thinking that this could be an amazing virtual reality camera because some of the pain points of virtual reality these days are you can't sync the cameras. A lot of them are very small sensors. They're not really great in low light. There's not a lot of lenses that cover them. This camera, because it's so modular and small and it can be rigged a bunch of different ways, it could be perfect for virtual reality. Uh, it's a very new camera, so we haven't done any real testing for it. But the form factor and the, the EF mount and all the support that we have behind it, the remote control, really seems perfect for virtual reality production. Um, because of our dual pixel autofocus, we think it's going to be perfect for drones um, because you can put it up and just kind of let the camera go and it'll, it'll autofocus as you're, as you're shooting. But you'll also be able to remotely control the camera, um, not through um, any kind of wireless remote, but with an actual plug. And then I'm thinking gimbals, you know, if you're using a Movi or a Ronin or something like that, it's perfect because 
you'll be able to use our dual pixel autofocus technology, which is really, really strong if you're a kind of DIY type shooter, if you're out there shooting on your own, if you're doing things that um, you don't have maybe the budget or the manpower to do that kind of thing. It's really perfect for stuff like that. And uh, some of the other places we'll see it as, as a fixed camera. We have a lot of news broadcasters who are interested in just kind of housing the camera um, in a certain place and controlling it through fiber uh, to be able to turn it on because it's really good in low light. It works with all of our EF lenses, so the, the infrastructure is already there for it. So this camera, because it's multi-purpose, it does have a really strong... Um, uh, purpose for multi-camera shoots. So we make a remote called the RCV100 that has both length control and RS422 control, which is kind of that broadcast standard. Uh, but you can convert it all to fiber and actually go hundreds of meters. So it's perfect for that, that camera that you don't want to actually touch, but you want to mount somewhere. You can paint the camera with the remote. You can do zoom control. That's one of the other, that's the power of the EF mount. You can actually control the zoom through it, and you really have a lot of options with this RCV100, painting the camera, assignable buttons, things like that. So the camera is only coming right now in EF, and it's, there's a reason for that. It's because the power of our EF lens and the EF mount works really well together with, with data, a metadata acquisition and being able to control the camera. So you'll be able to put EF and EFS lenses on the front of this camera because of the Super 35 size. You'll be able to put our EF cinema lenses, the whole, all 12 of them, including the primes and all of the servos and the compact zooms and the large zooms. The other interesting thing we found, too, is that with a third-party adapter, Canon doesn't make it, you'll be able to put two-third inch um, broadcast style lenses. Because of the pigtail on the front, it seems really perfect for that. We have a lot of those lenses out in the world right now, so we can't really guarantee anything specifically on how well the optics are because you're using a third party. But we have a camera set up at our booth right now that has a two-thirds inch broadcast lens mounted on the front with the adapter, so you can come take a look at that. So we're going to be shipping. It's kind of still being determined, but I've heard autumn, so closer to the uh, September, October time. So uh, I think we're taking pre-orders on it now, especially through B&H. So definitely check that out. Um, that's pretty much it on our new ME200 camera. The next thing I really want to talk about, I'm, I'm so excited about this product. This is a, a revolutionary um, a lens. And I actually have it right here uh, mounted to our C300 Mark II. This is our new compact servo cinema lens. This is something that's very, very exciting because Canon hasn't really had anything in this price point yet. And we've had customers ask us, when are you going to put a servo motor on your still EF lenses? I, uh, the, cer certain types of customers in reality, they want to be able to do that kind of push servo mode, but they don't want to use the small sensor cameras. They want that large sensor look. So. Canon kind of responded and said, okay, here's, here's what we have right now, and these are the price points. Let's try to find something that's somewhere between our cinema zooms, our compact zooms, and our EF still lenses that people use for photo and for video. So what's really interesting is it's a combination of all three of these lenses up here. You've got a little bit, kind of the best attributes of all three styles of lenses that Canon has done. Um, the first one's our cinema zoom, and you can kind of see it has the red back that unites it with the rest of the cinema lenses. Um, but in that price point, when you want a cinema zoom lens, it's $21,000. So it's very expensive. It's, a lot of people want to use this on documentaries. It's just it, it's priced out for a lot of people. So the idea was, let's find something that's functional and similar to that and optically very, very close. But let's bring it down to a kind of lower price point. Also, we offer an auto iris system in this camera. And that's traditionally something that you'd see on a broadcast style zoom. So I'll show you another photo where you actually get a close up of the lens. You'll see that auto iris capability. And then, of course, our photo and video EF still lenses. And a lot of people use these, but they wanted to do uh, controlled zooms. There's some shots that require in-camera zo in zooms where you, know, you have to rent a really expensive motor or something to make that work, and you have to gear out the lens. And that's what people were doing. So we found that right in that sweet spot between the $20,000 and $2,000 lens is where, is where this one's going to kind of live. It's going to hit a few different types of, of, of users. So. Just to start, some basic specs on this lens. The focal range is 18 to 80. So very, very similar. And, and in my mind, it makes me think of the Cabrio 19 to 90, which is a very popular lens. 
uh, and a similar focal length that's used on a lot of things. But again, that lens is, is about six, six times the price of this one. Um, it's got an EF mount, so it's going to work really well with all of our EF cameras. That, and that's really what's going to show um, all of the high um, advantages of this lens is the autofocus, it's the stabilization, the auto iris, things like that. Um, it's going to cover 4K resolution on a Super 35 size camera sensor, so pretty standard with our other cinema zooms um, and our uh, compact zooms and large format zooms. Um, it's a T4.4 straight through the lens. And a lot of people are used to very fast lenses these days, but a lot of people who are using these focal lengths um, are looking to be more in that four range because they need things to not be you know, so shallow depth of field to where your nose is in focus, but your ear is out of focus. So they wanted a little bit more in that range. And, and to create something this small and this lightweight, it would have been very, very challenging to make it a 2.8 or maybe even faster. But we found that 4.4, and especially with how good our cameras are in low light and, and how well they perform with the ISO, the 4 is, is really perfect and in that sweet spot. Uh, it's very, very light. I'm, I, I thought it was going to be much heavier when I saw photos of it. It's about just under three pounds. Um, it's got a nine blade diaphragm, which creates that beautiful, smooth bokeh that everyone's kind of looking for out of these lenses. Um, and it's still got that 77 millimeter diameter. So if you've already got polarizers, if you've got ND filters, things like that, uh, you'll still be able to use them on this lens. So to me, <clears throat> you see so much in this slide because this really says all, it shows all the combinations of the different things we have in this lens. So you can see right off the bat the auto iris wheel and the focal it looks similar to a broadcast gear pitch. It's a little bit smaller than what you'd see. The front gear pitch actually, where the focus is, is a little bit thicker and beefier that you'd see more on set. But this is kind of more what you'd see from a broadcast style lens and it's because we wanted to put the auto iris capabilities in it. So a lot of people won't use auto iris who are cinema customers. We get a ton of broadcast people who want it to be on full auto for the iris. So if they're running in between shots and they're running gun and they don't have time to really control that stuff, or maybe the operator is a little bit newer and doesn't understand exposure, they want to be able to hand a camera over to someone that and let it kind of make the decision. So the first, that's one of the best functions that we pulled from the broadcast lens and put into this one. The other thing we have is our dual, it's our autofocus. And that's really the strength of the Canon mount. When you use the Canon lens with the Canon camera, all of the innovative autofocus technologies that we've spent years developing, that's where you're going to see this lens shine. So it will support our dual pixel autofocus in our cinema products, which if you haven't used that before, it's without a doubt the most innovative uh, autofocus system in the market. It actually really works. That's why people like it. A lot of times autofocus is a very taboo word um, because it doesn't work very well. Ours works extremely well because it's contrast based. So it's not always hunting for things. It's using the brain of the camera with using the information from the lens as opposed to letting the lens do the work. Um, and then again, we've pulled our best attributes from our still lens, and we have full stabilization. So no one's really had a good stabilization system inside of a servo lens, especially at this price point. So again, it can be, there's such a value to this lens because it could easily be a full manual. You can turn all the autofocus systems off. You can turn the auto iris. You can turn the stabilizer off. It can be a full manual servo lens just like the cinema customer wants. But then if you're like, hey, I'm doing some handheld work and I need the stabilizer, you've got it there. I need the autofocus. I need the auto iris. So to me, there's a lot of value in this lens because it works for so many different types of productions. If you buy a ser servo cinema zoom, compact zoom lens or one of our larger ones, it's full manual. So you have no option to use any of the innovative systems that the 300 Mark II or the C100 Mark II has. So to me, there's a lot of value in this lens. Um, the really interesting thing here is the servo unit is integrated into the lens. So this isn't something that you're going to have to buy extra. The actual servo is built into the lens. You can't even take it off. And it's got the actual tele and wide button on the lens. So the interesting way that I like to operate this lens is if you're not going to actually do anything, you can hold it like this and actually control the servos with your fingers right here. So if I'm holding the lens up like this, I can do in-camera servo zooms without any extra uh, pieces uh, added to it. Um, so we also have a 20-pin control uh, plug. So any of the other standard accessories on the market will work with it, but it does take a 20-pin controller if you'd like to do that, if you don't actually want to control the zoom or the start and stop of the camera and things like that. And I showed you the switch as well. So what's amazing, too, is we're going to be offering an additional grip which can mount, as you can see, directly to the side of the lens, just like our 17 to 120 or our 50 to 1,000. So you can rock it kind of ENG style up on your shoulder. But it's also a removable grip that doesn't actually have to mount to the side of the lens. So when you're operating it, you can actually put it onto a handheld rig, and now you've got your zoom rocker, 
your on and off for the camera, and it even has a one-shot autofocus button. So really amazing. This is an additional price. This won't come with the lens. It'll be something that you'd have to get on top of the lens. But just know the servo side of it to actually push the motor is built into the lens. This is just so you have a little more flexibility if you're doing handheld work and things like that. So again, you know, you saw all the different things, but the real key is the rosette style. It's a cinema rosette style that is throughout the industry right now. It's very, very strong. It's got those interlocking teeth. So a lot of other companies make these, um, these rockers and they're very, very um, unreliable. You'll, if you put enough pressure on it, it'll start to, start to jump. But because this is an industry standard rosette, it's going to go on a lot of the third party products that are already out there. And it's going to be really strong. It has an actual screw in the front here. It's a real metal screw. It's not plastic on the inside. So it will really hold tight. And you can be free to really kind of hold onto this and feel comfortable with it. So, and we're only offering this lens in EF right now. I don't know if we have plans to develop it for PL. We've already had some, some people ask that at the show. Um, but there's a reason why we didn't do that just to start. It's because of how valuable the EF mount on the camera and the EF mount on the lens are together. They speak very well together. So you're getting those remote adjustment opportunities. So if you wanted to mount the camera on a jib or if you wanted to um, put it somewhere and have it, uh, have it mounted and you, you couldn't get to it, um, it's a really good way to do that. And again, the best part about the EF mount and the EF part of the camera is that you get all of your metadata is transferring through it. So anything that's being recorded, lens information, <clears throat> the angle of the camera, things like that are actually transferring through the mount and living on inside of the actual footage in, in metadata. So very valuable things, especially for VFX people, or if you have to go back and reshoot plates and things like that, you can actually have all that. Um, and it doesn't transfer sometimes when you use our lens on another body that has an EF mount. Um, you've got your T-stop displays, dual pixel CMOS autofocus is probably the biggest one because that's really what we have that nobody else has, is, how, is a really, really strong autofocus system. Um, you're going to get our focus guide, which is basically using the autofocus technology to tell you how far a subject is, and it gives you a little windowed guide with arrows. So as you get closer and closer, the arrows kind of come together and then go green. So if you're someone who doesn't like autofocus or you don't trust it, it's kind of perfect for that kind of shooter. It gives you just a guide of, of what's running on there. Um, and then, of course, you've got your push auto iris. So something you can't get with unless you have the Canon camera mount and the EF mount on the lens. And this lens is going to be shipping in autumn. I think we're already pre it's already available for pre-order uh, through B&H, so definitely check it out. Um, we're going to have three of these lenses over at the Canon booth, which is just uh, very close to here, just down the hall. And um, I would urge everyone to try this lens because it is revolutionary. Uh, the price is going to be about $5,500. We haven't really honed in on it. But what you're getting for this $5,500 price point is, is so amazing. There's so much value to it. it can, like, again, you could use it as a full auto lens. You could do it as a full manual lens. And especially our core customer who's doing a lot of dock style shooting and does, wants to use one of our cinema servo zooms, but it's way too expensive. This is that. This is the lens for that person. It's really for someone also who uses our maybe our 70 to 200 or some kind of still EF lens and is looking to get a little more power, uh, a little bit better image quality. This lens d has very minimal breathing on it. So if you're used to our still lenses and you see breathing when you're actually pulling the focus, this lens, because it's a cinema servo, has very, very minimal breathing. It's almost non-existent. So it's not just a rehoused EF lens. It actually is a more of a cinema lens that we've brought down to the price point closer to a servo lens. We didn't just re house one of our still lenses. But we did take a lot of the great attributes of that lens and put it all in here. So to me, this is a revolutionary style lens. And we're very excited because the engineers have confirmed that they're going to be doing a series of these lenses at those price points. So we have 18 to 80 now. Hopefully, we'll have something longer, something wider. Uh, but they have assured us this is one in a series of lenses. So I'm very excited about it. This was one of the most exciting things I think we've, we're showing uh, at the Canon booth this year. But we have our ME20, our ME200, the new one as well. Um, a ton of new things. Um, uh, that's pretty much it for this. I'm going to be back here tomorrow um, talking about new bundles that we're going to be doing. And I'll be here on Wednesday as well, where I'm going to be showing our new firmware updates and some new updates to our uh, HDR 4K displays. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.